preceding recorded program has been a paid advertisement by Mortgage Mom Radio, Inc. We offer this program as a service to our listeners. This station and its management do not endorse or object to the information, views, or opinions discussed in the program. Go Country 105. in the Brothers on Law show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. Brothers on Law. Welcome back to another episode of Brothers on Law Zoom edition. We want to give a big thank you to Debbie the Mortgage Mom and all her valuable information. We love following her. Hey, also, I want to, and this yeah. is Rob Mandel, just so y'all know, I'm, I'm, I'm here too. 
Yeah, there you go. And this is Larry Mandel. And also, right. we want to thank you for calling and nominating your local hero or group for going above and beyond for their community. Check out this message we received. Hey, brothers and mob. This is Patty L. from Los Angeles. Um, I just wanted to, in these trying times, I wanted to call on behalf of Country Villa Nursing Homes and Los Feliz for taking really good care of their residents. We're all scared. We're all going through some crazy stuff. My mom's there, and everyone is so nervous with what's going on, but the people there have been really making sure everybody's safe, and I want to thank them for that. It means so much to me, all of the extra effort that they're putting in. I just wanted to say hi to you guys. I love Good Country. I love your show. Thanks, guys, and hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Well, that was that was wonderful, and we should uh, we should reach out to those folks, huh, Larry? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, you know, if you want to nominate someone, you can please call us at one eight hundred three ten seven one one three and leave us a message. We want to hear from you. Yeah. So what we're doing, just to remind everyone, is we're encouraging our listeners to call in and tell us about someone or some company that's going above and beyond and we're going to reach out to the, some of these folks we're going to highlight them on the air just like that one and maybe even help them out if we can so that's what we're all encouraging you all to do and again that number is 800-310-7113 and yeah. speaking of local heroes we we nominate our own uh local hero uh is, is a nurse who's been on the front lines. She's exhausted. She's working tirelessly to help these COVID-19 patients. And her name is Kiki. Oh, now Kiki, pronounce your last name for me because I just messed it up. It's okay, it's Bumangalag. Yes, okay. Kiki Bumangalag. Okay, Kiki Bumangalag. From Kaiser Hospital in Pomona, right Kiki? No, Fontana. Fontana. And Close thank you that. for joining us. Yeah, thank you for Zooming with us. Oh, and no you're problem. working in the front lines, in the trenches, in the emergency room, correct? Yes, yes, right straight up. Um, even in the parking lot, we have COVID tents set up for our patients that are experiencing this horrific virus. It's just, wow. it's very scary. And tell us from, the, from your standpoint, because you're right there, you're in the trenches, as Larry said. Why is it so scary? Because we're watching patients go through the worst time in their life. They come in, they're not feeling well, thinking it's like a regular, you know, basic flu. Things progress, and you know, patients are passing. We yeah. all ages, ages from little babies all the way to you know geriatric patients. You know, and then the worst part is that the families cannot go in. And it's not just my facility, it's multiple facilities all over the nation where, you know, even patients that come in, you know, the husband or spouse or what have you is bringing in, you know, a patient saying, you know, their shortness of breath, they're having fever for multiple days, and loss of taste and smell. We bring them through the back entrance of the emergency department. And then once we do that, we start to assess them. And if we find out that they're a possible COVID, we do a rapid swab, we send it to the lab immediately, and we have a runner, and I'm one of the runners because I like to progress everything and make sure things get happening quickly. And wow. we can tell the patients, you know, loved one, you're gonna have to wait in your car, give us your cell phone, we'll call you with an update. What's happening to their family member, they're pretty much dropping them off through the back entrance with a big yellow tent, you know, in wow. the, emergency department and they're just praying because we don't know what's happening we don't know when they've contracted any if at all covid and we start the process from there and it, it's scary because the family members are just waiting in the parking lot for a call so they just wow. drop them off and they don't have any further contact once they're admitted correct correct we are the nurses that even when the patients are ready to get birth uh, the family members are outside they cannot come in just for their own safety and for the staff safety, because we don't know A from Z who's been exposed and who has not been exposed. Wow, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. And that is that must be very scary, uh, not only for the patients, but for the family members as well. Right. It is, it, especially if they're gonna be giving birth and they're by themselves. So they count on the nurses to use our own phones, which we have like in little 
plastic Ziploc bags that we can do FaceTime to family members outside. And it's, it's really wow. sad if you think about it, that wow. patients are, it may be first time, you know, moms giving birth and they're by themselves with nurses that they just meet coming in. So the, these are moms that they, they're not infected necessarily, but because the infection is there in the hospital, the husband can't come in, no one can come in. Correct. For their safety and for the child's safety and for the family member's safety as well, uh, who's been exposed and who has not. Yeah. So the... ER now is, I presume, more dangerous than it's normally under these circumstances. Correct. We have a lot more people coming in that are exposed. And not just to our facility, but, it's, you know, to facilities all over the nation and nursing homes, pediatric facilities. I just worked in a pediatric facility in Bellflower and an urgent care in Downey. And multiple cases are coming in without them even realizing that they're exposed. Wow. Yeah. Now, why you, you, you talked about in the very beginning that this is spanning all age groups. So this idea that only uh, very weak or very old people are going to end up in the hospital, that, that's not what you're saying. Um, it's mostly patients that are immunocompromised or have a pre-existing circumstance. But others that do come in that get exposed from family members that have been out and about. You guys saw, you know, on spring break, all those people that went to say uh, in Miami or South Beach somewhere or Orlando. They were doing the nonchalant, I don't care, it's not me, I'm too young, I can't get exposed. But if you look at the statistics of all those people that went there, multiple people were exposed and brought it back to their family. So it's, even if you're young and healthy, that you could be a carrier and then expose it to your grandfather, exactly. grandmother, et cetera, right? Or a newborn or compromised with kidney, you know, um, any any issues that have asthma. That's a big, big issue. People that have asthma, are, you have to protect them. Yeah. Because inflammatory is going to spread like wildfire. What, what do you know the, um, uh, the science of that or the... Uh, uh, biology of that, why does it get so virulent in your lung, you know, so dangerous in your lung? Because we, we have noticed that the patients that are coming in have shortness of breath and loss of taste buds and loss of smell. And they're, you have to protect your upper nares, your nose, because it's breathing in and it's a dry cough. It's not the mucusy stuff that people usually um, attend to when it comes to upper respiratory. When they're coming in with shortness of breath and a dry cough and a fever, that is ding, 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 red flag. Those are telltale yeah. signs. But do you know why, why this thing does that? Do, do, we, do we understand this virus enough to even know why it, it can be so deadly? Every day it's changing, and we're noticing uh, the ages in patients are changing, and the, the realm. Like, there's some patients that come in just saying that I feel body aches, and my back is hurting, and I feel weak and very fatigued. Not necessarily a shortness of breath that day, but yesterday I wasn't feeling good and I felt like I had pressure in my chest. Some things we assume are something else, they come in to get checked and only macaroni so it's, there it is. it's not just yeah. one type of symptomology or symptoms. It could be a variety of things. Correct. And then there's some things that people are misdiagnosing as, oh, it's just, you know, you have a cough or you have, uh, it's asthma related, but some facilities don't have the supplies or anything to be able to take care, like in, in you know,